Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to another Soul Calibur video. Now today, I'm going to be talking about Shang Hua, in celebration of her recent reveal in Soul Calibur. But before we actually go into detail about her, we need to talk a little bit about her family, as it does play a part for her in the first Soul Calibur game. Now Shang Hua derives from the Chai family, a group of well-renowned Chinese fighters, and it was tradition for their family to become an expert in a particular martial art and join the Imperial Guard. And this would go from generation to generation, eventually falling to Shang Hua's mother, Shang Fei, who would travel to the Li Sheng Su Temple, a monastery that was well renowned for housing some of Asia's best fighters. So Shang Fei would travel there as she wanted to become an expert with a sword. Now over the course of time, she would surpass many of the individuals that lived at the temple and had been studying there their whole lives. So she became a bit of a prodigy. However, in the midst of her training, grief struck and her father unfortunately died. So she sought out comfort with individuals at the temple and this is where she met Kong, a monk who lived at the temple and a candidate to in fact inherit the legendary Kali Yuga. But this all fell apart quite quickly, as Shang Fei and Kong in fact fell in love with each other, something that went against the temple's beliefs of celibacy. And to make matters worse, she conceived a child with him, and when the child Zhang Lian was born, she'd be taken away from her mother to be raised at the monastery. Now heartbroken and distraught over this, she would leave the temple and return back home empty handed, not knowing that she was in fact once again pregnant. Now Kong knew that the chances of the two in fact seeing each other again was extremely slim. But as a goodbye gift and a way of promising that the two would one day meet again, he would sneak out one of the temple's legendary weapons, the Krita Yuga. He would hand this weapon over to her as his final gift to her before they parted ways. But as we all know, this wasn't his last gift to her, as a few months later, she would in fact give birth to Shang Hua. Now Shang Hua had a very good childhood, with her mother always being supportive of her and in fact teaching her everything she knew when she was training at the temple. But unfortunately, at the age of 11, Shang Fei would in fact die. And five years later, Shang Hua would follow the family tradition of becoming an imperial guard. Now, during the events of the first Soul Calibur game, the Emperor of China had been sending out his forces to search for this legendary sword known as Soul Calibur. But every single time they ventured out, his troops either didn't return or came back empty handed. So he would reach out to his imperial guards personally and tell them of the situation and how he wanted to acquire this legendary weapon. Now, as you would expect, Shang Hua was one of these individuals, and the guards were given the orders to travel in disguise so that they didn't alert individuals and would be able to find the weapon with relative ease. Now, whilst on her journey, she remembered her mother warning her just before she died that the life ahead would be very difficult and there would be some challenges that would really push her to the limit. Now, whilst on her journey, she came across Keelik and Maxi, and the two told her of an evil weapon, one that was corrupting and killing many individuals across Asia and Europe. And Shang Hua came to the real realization that this evil sword may in fact be the one that's killing individuals that are searching out for the hero sword. So it didn't take much convincing for Shang Hua to team up with Keelik and Maxi, and together the three would travel to Ostrinsberg so they could battle Nightmare and his dark forces. Now Maxi would battle Astaroth, whilst Keelik and Shang Hua dealt with Nightmare. Now during the final battle, Keelik was able to defeat Nightmare, but right after this, the two would be pulled within the demonic weapon Soul Edge, where they went face to face with the being that lied within it, Inferno. Now Keelik was unable to battle Inferno as he suffered severe injuries from battling Nightmare. So Shang Hua would step up and go face to face with Inferno and during the battle would shockingly learn that the hero sword that she's in fact been looking for was in fact the one she wielded in her hands the entire time. The weapon that her mother had given her was a legendary sword from the Ling Sheng Su temple, Soul Calibur. And this led to Shang Hua defeating Inferno, saving not only herself and Keelik but the entirety of Europe and Asia, even if it was for a while. But unfortunately, during the final battle, when she was cast out of Soul Edge with Keelik, Soul Calibur was lost within Soul Edge. So unfortunately, she returned back to China empty handed. Now, the Emperor was not pleased by this at all, and she was actually stripped of her rank and was put in a minor position. Now, four years later, the Emperor's obsession with magical, powerful weapons had reached new heights. He would, in fact, outright kill individuals if he even believed that they had some form of contact with Soul Edge. And this, in fact, led to the destruction of an entire city of all citizens that in fact lived there being executed. The Emperor then approached Shang Hua, who was the only individual that he personally knew that had in fact come to contact with Soul Edge. He wanted her experience and knowledge to locate the weapon, and she would do as her Emperor pleased. But during her mission, she learned from her former colleagues that Soul Edge still apparently existed, and that there were fragmented shards scattered throughout the entirety of China, corrupting and turning individuals into insane murderers. So Shang Hua would once again travel out with the hopes 
of destroying Soul Edge. Now during her journey she once again came across Keele and together they would venture out to destroy any of these fragmented shards. Now during her journey the two came across a immortal individual who was able to battle and defeat Keele leaving him in a critical state. Although the man had the upper hand he let the two of them go. So Shankwa had to take Keele back to his home with Edgemaster. Now Shankwa felt extremely guilty for what happened to Keele as she didn't feel like she was skilled enough to in fact intervene with the battle and give him the upper hand. But Edgemaster took notice of this and recommended her to train with an old general. So she would leave Keelik and Edgemaster but leave behind a note saying to Keelik that she would train extremely hard so something like this never happens again. So Shankwa would seek this man out and train with him and over the course of time her skills would improve significantly as by training with him she was able to accept her weakness and let go of the pain which in turn made her a much stronger individual and after her training was done she would set her eyes on Ostreinsberg as she could feel the final battle approaching but she also deep down had the hopes that she would see Keelik again soon and during the events of Soul Calibur 4 the two crossed paths once again. Now during their journeys the two started to develop feelings for each other and the two were aware of this but couldn't act on it as it was a necessity that they destroy Soul Edge. But luckily during the battle of Ostreinsberg it was Siegfried that vanquished Nightmare and Soul Edge temporarily stopping any chaos created from the weapon and with Soul Edge now gone it allowed Shankwa and Keelik to connect romantically and they were together for a few years but unfortunately this wasn't meant to last as Keelik had to travel the world in order to close Astral Chaos gates preventing the world from being torn apart from the dangers that lied within. Now this broke Shankwa's heart as she wanted to settle down with Keelik and when she returned back home to China her family realized that she was pregnant and in fact wanted her child killed as it wasn't part of a prestigious bloodline. Now despite this Shankwa gave birth to Zeba and was given to another family so he could be raised and given a life that he deserved. Shankwa would then marry into the Yan family and although she wasn't entirely too happy about this, Wu Jin supported every choice that she made, even allowing her to go see Zeba when she had the opportunity. And over the course of time, the two would have children, that being Lysia and Lysin. And although we don't see her in Soul Calibur 5, it is quite heavily implied that she is now settled down and is enjoying her life. And that's actually it for Shang Hua guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and learned a lot more about the character, as she does have a prestigious background and has been within the franchise for a long time. Since Soul Calibur 6 is going to be a reboot of the first game, will most likely play quite an important role in the story. So hopefully this makes you a little bit more familiar with her and what you can somewhat expect to see in the new Soul Calibur game. Now just a heads up as well guys, originally this was going to be the Taki video, but like I said at the beginning since it was in celebration of her reveal, I decided to talk about her now. But in saying that, the Taki video is going to happen next, regardless of whether or not we get any other reveals. Because let's face it, everyone's kind of waiting for it. But yeah, that's kind of it for this video guys. If you have any other suggestions, please put them down in the comments below. I have been seeing a few Voldos, so he may be after Taki. Again, comment down below. That's a great way of letting me know what you guys like to see. Anyway, guys, before this video wraps up, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. So by giving it a thumbs up, it helps out a ton. Now, as always, guys, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care, and I'll see you all next time.